This is one of those videos I wasn't gonna make a video for, but then it turned out really cool and I decided to make a video for it and well, this is the video. Not everything needs to have a microcontroller. Not everything needs to be connected to the internet. Some things do, sure, but not everything. And that's what we discovered when we were at the track with the sledgehammer last time. There was a computer glitch in the control circuitry and well, it blew a pass for us. Well, it left a lot harder because the glove box door opened up and everything flew out, but uh, it, it laid over, oh, I don't know, not too far into the run, like it, like it just lost everything, everything. Your toaster does not need to be connected to the internet and probably doesn't need a microcontroller. The same with most cooling fans for that matter. So as you all know, I've been screwing around with uh, trying to control the temps, not just with the radiator and with the sledgehammer electric supercharger. Ha, huh, I called it a supercharger, but also with the transmission temps in particular. Oh, hi, Simon. Of course you're here because that's what you do. Really? Really, dude? Go ahead, take your time. These good people. After our last round of tests, I decided to pull the actual transmission cooler off the radiator and mount it separately and externally. And this is actually the transmission cooler. And I also decided, hey, it probably needs some fans. And I did some measurements and guess what fits perfectly? 120 millimeter computer fans, two of them. Now these are pretty high powered ones. It's a pretty good brand. These move some air. They're actually PWM controllable fans, but we're not gonna use PWM control. They're gonna be on or off. Let's keep things simple, right? And how do you control them? Well, you could have a thermostat, like a digital one that controls temperatures. In fact, cause I'm weird. I have one right here. I bought this for some project, never used it. So this is like one of those Inkbird programmable. I mean, yeah, you could do this. You know, you can program it to do all kinds of fun stuff. It's a wee bit overkill. And, you know, normally overkill is a good thing, but when overkill includes a lot more parts, that's a lot more points of failure. Sometimes, a lot of times, simpler is better. So actually they do this stuff like in microwaves too. If you've ever taken a microwave apart, uh, you're gonna find a lot of these things. So all you really need to control a set of fans on a, a radiator of any sort is just a simple thermostatic switch. This is a simple thermostatic switch. This one happens to be 45 degrees Celsius and it is normally open. So when it hits 45 degrees Celsius, which is about 113 degrees Fahrenheit, it closes. They make them normally closed, normally open, all kinds of different temperatures. You know, I'll put links in the description below if you want to get yourself some. These are generally rated at five amps. Well, these are server fans, 120 millimeter fans that are rated at 1.6 amps. But remember, they're going to be kind of overvolted a little bit and I'm okay with that. Uh, so they move a little bit more than 1.6 amps, but we'll see that actually on the power supply over there. So let me show you how this thing works. All right, so we've connected the power supply to the fans. Power supply is here, but it's off right now. Let me go ahead and turn it on. And like I said, it's set at 13 and a half volts. Right now, because the thermostatic switch, which is tucked in right under here, I can pull it out so you can see it a little bit better. Put it back under. And this, by the way, is a 45 degree thermostatic switch which, you know, it's 113 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And that seems kind of, you know, a little low, but, you know, transfer is not going to be perfect and all that. So you got to kind of, you know, undershoot to get the effect you want. But basically, it's just a bimetallic strip inside of it that opens and closes a pair of contacts. It's pretty straightforward. Here's my heat gun set to 100 degrees Celsius. That's 212 degrees Fahrenheit. All I'm going to do is heat this thing up, and you can see over there on the power supply there's no current draw this will turn on there it is and we're pulling four amps almost 3.6 3.7 3.8 
I mean, these fans move a lot of air. It's, it's a good amount of air. But, you know, let's get the heat gun off of them. And when this cools off... When this cools off... When this cools off... <laughs> there we go. So yeah, so it took a few seconds. It wasn't terribly long, but you actually want that. And that's that's just the nature of the bimetallic strips. They have to, you know, drop temperature and change their shape to open the contacts. And that takes a little bit of time. But that's perfect because when you're doing this digitally, you have something called hysteresis. So if you have your cooling fan kick on at 180 degrees, you don't want it to kick off at 180 degrees as well. Because then it's going to go on, off, on, off, on, off, and it's going to melt your relay. Probably. So this represents the old way. And sometimes the old ways are the good ways. Thank you so much for watching and coming along. All of this goes towards putting the sledgehammer on the dyno as soon as possible. Uh, we're going to be testing the line-to-line -line coded volute and also the AEM meth injection. Plus, of course, there's a new converter in there, so we should be making a whole lot of power. That's all coming up as soon as possible. If you like this kind of stuff, please give me a thumbs up. That certainly helps the YouTube algorithm, and there's a lot more stuff coming up with the electric turbo. In fact, that's what this thing is here. This is... Uh, Optical tachometer. I already have one, but the purpose of this one exists to be taken apart, and it's already taken apart because it's going to be tested on the other P2-based supercharger here shortly, so there's a lot coming up. These are two of my biggest fans. <laughs> oh, good God. Mm -hmm.